So, sure. But if you don't have that many early. But, but in the meantime, here we are at Grand Prix Seattle. We're about to go to round nine. It is the last round of day one, the last round of sealed deck. Uh, everyone X and two is going to sit down tomorrow and get to draft. X two or better. I'm Brian David Marshall. I'm here with Marshall Sutcliffe, and we are about to watch two pros play a win and in match of magic. One of these guys will sit down at the draft table, and one of these guys is going to go play inside events. <laughs> it's a lot on the line here for these guys. So there you get a look at Matt Sperling, uh, Channel Fireball uh, associated, writer, associated, yep. you know. Um, works a lot with Paul Ritzel and Gab Nassif and, and sort of that, uh, you know, sort of loosely affiliated group of uh, brewers. Yep. Uh, fellow and podcaster. Fellow podcaster, mm-hmm. yep. There you get a look at... You know, possibly one of the most famous players in the game right now. Yep. Most, most certainly one of the most popular and enduring player. Player who, again, we talked about John, we talked about Noah Wild, goes back to Pro Tour 1, played in the junior division of Pro Tour 1 in New York, you know, more than 18 years ago. Um, Brian Kibler, Pro yep. Tour Dark Ascension champion. Yeah, Brian, Two-time Pro Tour winner. Yeah. You know, very, very elite. Very few people can very see that, Very few people right? can yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not something that happens very often. Yeah. And ever since he's come back... (laughs) Yeah, he's just made it look easy. He's crushed it. Yeah, he's made it look easy. Um, Matt Sperling playing uh, a blue-white deck with a spirit theme. Yep. He's got the Drug Skull Captain. One Uh, of my favorite cards out of Dark Ascension. Yeah, yeah. One of the most powerful as well. And uh, he's playing against Brian Kibble. Brian Kibble's playing red-black, and he's got the Stromkirk Captain. He does. Which we saw earlier today just be... Oh, instrumental. Just just dominating. You saw Matt Costa's deck, and he just... Is it... Yeah, it was Matt Costa who had it. Yep. Yeah, it was just brutal. Yep. So Matt Sperling is on the play. He's looking at his hand. Is this like he's is still thinking. These seven cards going to do it. Looks like he's reading the cards, maybe. <laughs> I didn't know this was in my yeah. deck. What does this one do? He's really taking his time. I mean, what he's thinking, you know, we, we've talked a lot about sequencing. He's yep. like, what are my first three turns, right? Right. What am I going to do? How do what I am I going to play? Game? What am I going to draw? What am I hoping for? What am I hoping the board to look like in four turns? It's like, ah, I hope it, you know, he's like, no, that's not it. What's my plan? Yeah. Yep. Okay, and uh, Kibler Kibler snap, snap keeping. He's like, yep, keeping this. I think it was a six, though. Did he mulligan? Oh, I'm, it looked I'm, like six to me. I'm not sure. Do we know if uh, Kibler mulligan? The seven? Okay. He kept seven? Yeah. All right. Mystery solved. Thanks, Rusty. Do you ever find m- mysteries... Twice as hard to solve when Ray's around, not around. Yeah, very <laughs> difficult. That's what I thought. Only being half of the greatest mystery solving duo of all time is, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not very exciting. He works. He works the back half of the mystery, right? Like you ask the question and he answers it. That's how it works. That's what I thought. Yeah, I don't know. So uh, you'll you'll first pick a drug tool captain pretty happily. Yep. Very much so. I might even tonight. Right, he's so he was down. To, he was down to five, huh? It looks like it. Yeah. He's gonna play a Niblis of the Urn, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> That's the one that taps. Yeah. When it, it whenever, whenever it attacks, it and gets Kibler's got to turn to a uh, Highborn Ghoul here. So we know who's winning this race currently. Right. The nibbles for the urn is just a 1-1. One, one. It's just a 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Not even going through the, the bother of tapping I the guy. I guess not. I mean, it probably happens. All right, and we got a chapel geist. Man, that drug skull captain. Right. It's really <laughs> good in good his right deck. Here. Yeah. So, <clears throat> Highborn Ghoul has Intimidate. He can just get in freely with it, and he's going to play Torch Fiend. Torch Fiend now. Which might actually come into play if... Uh, if Matt's playing some equipment, which would actually be quite good in his deck. I don't, I don't know offhand if looks, he is. It looks like he's only got a wolf uh, hunter squiver. All right. Well, that counts. This game, that won't get equipped unless there's a trade that happens. There's a voiceless spirit. There's a voiceless spirit. Yeah, this is, a, is like this is a pretty spirit. sick ball to five. This is, this is pretty nice. He also can't attack Kibler. Kibler can't attack. All right. So you take five. 
Is that a Thraben Sentry? I don't know. What What did he just play? It was play? only three mana. Yeah. That could have been a Midnight Guard. You think twice. Say, Come on, Drug School Captain. No kidding. Oh, there, uh, we, there go. we go. Oh, oh it's, it's a Gavany Iron Smith. Yeah, Iron yeah. I think it's Iron Right. I can't remember. I'm not a big fan of that card, but it goes really well in a deck like Matt's. really good Iron Right, yeah. Yeah, Iron Right. It goes really well in a deck like Matt's. Well, the thing is, you... you because it clogs the ground. Well, not only does it clog ground, like, you know, you he, win... As you, we say that, he gets in. Yeah, you win combat with it. Sure. Like, in the sense that... You like, if you're, But I'm saying, if your opponent attacks into you, mm -hmm. and you're going to fall to Fateful Hour life total... Oh, yeah. As a result of the combat, mm -hmm. all your creatures that are in combat... Oh, that happens in that way. That, that's oh, like, I yeah, yeah. I, that. I'm 99% certain wow. that that's true. Wow, and, and look Killer at that. Just scoops it up. That is on a mold of five that on the play. That was a sick curve. Just works. And he didn't have the drugs called Just Captain works there. Kibler like a body bag. Which is, <laughs> which is interesting because Kibler's the one that was trying to uh, be the aggressor. And yeah. he even had a turn to aggressive play. And it was yeah, just never was a factor. <clears throat> I think we're going we're gonna to see in this one that... Uh, Whoever goes first <laughs> is going to have a... I don't know that going first would have helped Kibler there. True. There, there, <laughs> there was know. not a race to be had there, that's for sure. It was especially harsh because uh, the place... I mean, that, maybe that's why you, you don't play Haunted Fengraf. You're like, who cares about my... Like, I just don't care. I'm just going to play my guys. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they die. I don't care if I can get them back. I'm just going to... Because there's just going to be more guys. Yeah, there. I'm just never going to have that time. Yeah. I mean, and he's got double white <laughs> mana symbols here. Like, sure. A risk, but yeah, that's pretty. That's one of the good things about those spirits is that you know he attacks with the Niblis, and then he plays the Chapel guys, and Kibler can't attack into it, so he says go, and then he attacks, and then Smurling attacks with both of his flyers, and then he plays the uh, Voiceless Spirit, and Kibler can't attack into that either. So right. the race just gets halted, and, and the tempo all favors Matt there. His deck, his deck looks good. And, then, and his two Avicinian priests are going to be sweet. Oh, very much so. I see he's got a burden of guilt there. You know, I like that one. Is he running a uh, spectral flight? Can't be, right? That was a think twice or something. Oh, he, all of his guys are. No, he's got. I mean, he's got one in his sideboard. Okay. I don't. I don't think. I, I thought I saw him, but I, I yeah, don't. Just bring it speaking in. of spirits that are in his deck, he also has a Sturmgeist. He does. Yeah. Jeez. Sturmgeist with hexproof. He's got a Delver sequence he's not playing. Yeah, his deck's, this deck is sweet. That does I wonder what he really lost to. <laughs> oh, there's a leveling Oh my battle. god, dude. Oh, they invited each other to the dance. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, so what we just what we just you probably just heard Rashad Miller explain. Do a good job. Yeah, no, or a great whisper job. <laughs> Camera hog. You uh, <laughs> was uh, that Brian Kibler has a second deck that he's setting into. Then taking a look at his deck list, you think maybe you know what what he's what he's doing here. It's definitely but, not blue. He doesn't have enough playable. But these guys, are, these guys are pretty good friends. They spend a lot of time hanging out together. They've probably playtested against each other a lot throughout the day. And Matt Sperling is fully aware of what Brian Kibler's other deck is. So there's a little bit of a two-step going on as Kibler tries to maybe make him think, maybe I'm siding it in, maybe I'm not siding it in. He has everything all sleeved up, and he's just shuffling cards in and out. And the only other... I guess he's got... Ooh, Kibler has a lot of white here. He's got... Nothing good. Did you look for a lost in the woods? I did. It's not there. <laughs> <laughs> but he, I think if he was going to go to a second deck, it would probably be green. He's got some reasonable spells, although... Eh, nothing truly, nothing really amazing here. Prey upon Spidery Grass were probably pretty good. Versus, spider Grass uh, seems nice. Yeah. What's his green on this side? He's got a Crushing Vines, which he would bring in for sure. sure. Yeah, Somber Wall, Dryad... Village Survivors is pretty good. The bear is okay. Right. I don't know. He might just want the Prey Upon and the Crushing Vines, you know. When he's also got, like, in white, <laughs> yeah, Gather the Town Folk, Iron Right of His Own, Increasing Devotion, Wild Cathar, Midnight Guard. Those are good cards. Yeah. yeah. he might just do that. White, black. 
Well, maybe there's, there's a chalice of life here in his board. Yeah. I did see that um, Killers got uh, one Geist Flame and one Heretic's Punishment. Okay. Um, but you can also go to a red white more controlling guy. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it just it just feels like Heretic's punishment's gonna be too slow to actually I don't yeah, I don't care for that. I don't think I would bring that card in against the I wouldn't deck we either. Just but Guy Slam, which he already has right, in there, is gonna be good. And he's yeah. main decking the Heretic's punishment, so at least in his original build. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow, that was a multiple five. That was that was absurd. Uh, yeah. Smash uh, very, very impressive. <laughs> Highly aggressive. I think Kib Kibler's kept, and I think Scarlet's thinking. If you are wanting to play in any of the eight-player pickup events, draft, so on and so forth, it's like a pretty land-heavy hand there. Last call for any eight-person pickup. You know, he doesn't need a lot of man mana to operate his deck. It looks like three is the critical number for him, and then it yeah. looks like he can play a guy every turn after that. He's on the draw here. He just doesn't want to have like. That, 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 I, I do nothing, kind of. Yeah, no, no. It's, especially on the draw. And, and from what we've seen, at least out of the first game, it doesn't look like Kibler's deck's very interactive with Matt's, probably, from Matt's perspective. Oh, yeah, the, the, yeah these, these decks are just on opposite planes. They yeah, just, one's in the air and one's yeah. on the ground. Yeah. yeah, and they're kind of flying over each other. It's and like, even if, you, even if your guy was on the ground, I've got to intimidate, you know, yeah. or I've got first strike. Or, right. It feels like Zendikar. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I've got hexproof flyers... You've got first striking intimidators, and yeah, I just, it just seemed not that interactive. Now that was a, a fairly small sample; we didn't yeah. get to see much of Kibler's deck because uh, Sperling kind of ran him over there. But um, probably safe assumption from Sperling. Here. So last we saw Brian Kibler's deck, it was black red. Yes, it is still black. We don't know if he. We don't know if he switched entirely or partially or. Bless you. Bless you. I see an Abyssinian priest. I see a wolf hunter's quiver. I think. Let's see what happens here. We have black red. Okay, so he he, he opted to not do the two step there. Yep, and the priest comes down. Matt has drawn. Um, the uh, mind control spirit, which I can't remember the name of. Soul there, Caesar. Soul Caesar. And we've got a Markov Patrician. This is a race changing spell. This means that you can't race anymore uh, until you deal okay, with it. Markov Patrician with a Stromkirk Captain is very good. Yeah. Pretty brutal. And we see a Wolf Hunter's Quiver come down, and then the plan is. It's just a completely different tempo of play here from. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah, he's like, okay, tap your guy. And we have a four drop. We do, this is the uh, deserter. Afflicted deserter, yeah. That seems pretty decent here. Um, he's, Matt doesn't have enough time to equip the Wolf Hunter's Quiver because it costs five. So uh, if he doesn't play a spell, uh, then Kibler's going to get to not only turn his guy into a five four, but also destroy the Wolf Hunter's Quiver and do three to Matt. Now, if Matt does play a spell, which he did, he played a Thraven Sentry, now it looks like Kibler's probably just going to pass the turn. Sure. Uh, if he doesn't, then Matt can hit a land drop, equip his quiver, and just kill the dessert. And start killing all types of stuff. Remember, the quiver does three to wolves. Yeah. Uh, to werewolves, excuse me. Kibler's going to offer... Eh, he's just going to attack. I mean, it doesn't... I mean, I guess that... Uh, Sperling could block with Players. his Draven Sentry. He was really worried about it, but no. it's not going to. Number 20. If you could come to the end of the public event stage, once again, you signed up for standard for a box. He's Number thinking about 20. it. Like he, he, he might be tapping out for Soul Caesar next turn. Yeah. He might. I mean, he needs to deal with the Patrician. I think he's probably realized at this point that he's not going to be able to quiver it. Um, he can just tap it down forever. Sure. But like you said, if he, if he wants to untap his place, it doesn't work that way. Well. Yeah. Alright, 
right. So Kibler does pass the turn in. I don't know if you saw, but he, he did, did make the trade. Yeah, yeah. he traded with the uh, tapper, and so that he could flip his guy. Um, thank you. Sperling takes three on the flip and is now facing down a five four. So there's two five fours on the table. One has Trent. And he's going to play. He wants to play that soul Caesar. Take your five four. I'll have all the five fours. Mm -hmm. He's going to lose a fair bit of tempo here if he does that because it, I don't think he wants to offer the trade here, right? If Kibler takes it, yeah, actually that's not too bad either. I see Heretic's punishment in Kibler's hand. It's a long-term plan. It's really affected in. more now. He did. Looks like a uh, near Heath stalker and a forge shovel. I apologize for any eating sounds. People at home, thin mints are just so delicious. Yeah, so when people walk by and offer you cookies, mint, you mm, say yes. Do not turn that down. That's also a magic rule. So there's the Soul Caesar. Yeah, I mean, that's part of it. Like, he knows he's not going to be able to use his, his guy. Mm -hmm. He gets a 5-4. I mean, it yeah. seems like, you know, he's like not romantically attached to the fact that he wants to tap stuff. Right. I like the play so far. Kibler is going to offer this trade, And if he taps and, like, hits... Hits with the Celsius and steals the 5 4. Yeah. Kibler didn't have anything at instant speed. I think Kibler has a uh, Death's Caress, though, and I think he might just have to use it on the Soul Caesar. Oh, interesting. I, I, I'm not 100%. I know he has a, a Chosen. Near Heath Stalker, yeah. He does shuffle his cards a lot. Yeah, he really does. That's, that's... <laughs> Doesn't make it easy on us, is he? <laughs> he says he's not even aware of it when he does it. I heard him say that. As far as yeah, I, I take that. <laughs> take five. Got it. He's like 17. Fairly comfortable life total. Yeah, that is a death grass for sure. Although, I don't know if he's got a land. Yeah, it takes five mana for that. He only has four right now. That's right. So it looks like the Chosen or the Stromkirk Captain is going to come down. He's got to really plan this out. He knows he's going to lose his 5-4. Uh, yeah. When he mind controls it, it'll be tapped. So Kibler's trying to decide if he can get in enough damage by next turn to put himself in a reasonable position after that to maybe... Heretic's Punishment out. Again, so he's going to play the Chosen, but like you mentioned before, it's actually pretty clunky, right? Yeah. It's, it's not. It's a human right now, so even if he plays Stromkirk Captain the next turn, it, it doesn't get first strike and plus one, plus one until yeah. he flips it. So we're, we're talking about kind of right a now, delay. Right now it's a human. It's a human now, right. Yeah. So we're going to... So it sounds like, uh, despite losing to John last round... Cedric Phillips uh, won his winning in. Mm. Right, because he fell to a six and two after eight rounds. So he got his seventh win. He knocked out Craig Edwards, mm. who we last saw a top eight in Austin. So yep, there we go. Steal your guy. Play a chapel guys. Nice board state. Curling with his arms crossed, it's just an interesting body. He's like, yeah. well, well, do you have it? What do you, do you? Right. What do you and, got? And Kibler did draw the land that he needed to do a death stress if that's what his play is here. Kibler's at 17, so he can take another hit, even a full hit. And, and, well, and he and can also he can also gain four if he kills like the. Yeah, the sentry. Yeah. Yeah. He just decided to play Dwarven Stalker because the next turn. Right, well, he can he can buy a turn with that. Yeah. Well, and he can. So what he gets to do here is he can trade it. He can flip his. He's chosen over this turn as well. Well, he needs a. Do you need a mana to do it or no? No, it just taps. So. Oh yeah. Yeah. So he can actually put like the chosen in front of the sentry. Um, he can actually just trade the, for both of those. He guys, can put right? the stalker in front of the other guy and just flip and then trade him off and then. He's going to have, he can untap and play And then he'll Heretic's have a 5-2 at the end of it. And he'll have a 5-2 and Heretic's Punishment. Right. And, uh, and still have a removal spell in his hand yes. for the Chapel Guys. For the Chapel Guys, or if he just wants a Punishment in it, or he's got a lot of options. All right, so that's a strong play. Uh, Burden, Burden of Guilt, really, really 
is screws up the math here. It, it does, and and like what we were mentioning before about how it really messes with uh, undying. You know. Yeah. Because that Nurheath stalker was going to do some serious work. And yeah. Well, I mean, gonna... again, he was able. He was going to be able to just like clear this board up. Yep. Now he's now it's going to be laying on the ground. If he wants to flip, he's going to take. He has to, he has to take. Yeah, he has to take twelve to flip. That's right. X. And if he doesn't, then he's chumping with that thing. And that's, <laughs> that's what he's. Not, I don't think that's, that's what he's doing. Point. Yeah, he's got to flip it. Yeah. Take twelve. Go to five. So the thing is, he can kill the Thraben militia and gain four. He can. That would put him back to nine, and then... Uh, nine, and still have and, and the Chosen back to trade right. with one of the other things. He'll go to seven. Oh, this is tight. The, yeah. This is very close. Kibler is just trying very hard to work out a situation where he's not dead <laughs> and yeah. can get to this board to stable, because once he does, that heretic's punishment's going to come down. Yeah. And I think that that's going to really wreak havoc on Spurling's death. So, uh, by the way, just Craig Wesco... Nine oh. Nine oh. He completed he completed the day one mission. Do we have any news on the Brian Wong versus Owen Turpinwald match? No, but uh, we'll we'll try to we'll try okay. to get some. I'm curious. Alright. So he does make the play that you were talking about, Brian, where he uh, gains the right. floor. Draven militia is a uh, human on that side too, so Yeah. And he is gonna forge devil pinging his own near heat stalker. Nice. Yep. It's going to put him to eight, but Go he's to eight, get but, a five. But two, he gets a five two. That's great, great trade. play. This is great. And we have and, and flips down. I believe he played two spells, so it's going to flip did. down the afflicted deserter. Look at this. It still just trades with it, but he can also chunk the if he wants to keep his near heat stalker alive. Matt's at eight. <laughs> that was quite a swing. Yeah. If if he if he attacks with a deserter, he you know Brian has the option to just block with the Forge Devil. Crack back for lethal. Yeah. I'm really impressed with how Brian's played this game. Sperling is uh, flooding. <laughs> He's got two more lands in his hand. Six on the board already. And I believe a Silver Chase Fox? Is that? Or, oh no, it's a uh, the Knight. Uh, Spectral Rider. the near hate stalker probably just blocks. He's going to flip over the afflicted deserter again. Mm -hmm. He could do that, just make it a 5-4. Yeah, if he doesn't attack. I mean, he kind of has to commit a little more to the board yeah, here. Yeah, you get a look at Sperling. Sperling, he's deep in 5. All right, he's just going to attack. Yeah, just attack with the flyer. Geist. And he's going to play. Oh, he is gonna, he's not going to flip it, yep. Yeah, I don't think it makes a big difference. It's still trading for the Good. stalker, whether it's flipped or not. doesn't trade for the uh, chosen Except there is Stromkirk Captain. Stromkirk Captain comes down, giving both of these first strike. Yeah. Attack for six, attack for 11 first strike. Wow. Now, Sperling can take one of these. Sure. <laughs> wow, you know what? I, I'm super impressed with Sam Black. Did he? Yeah. Did he he really? came back from 03 to top 25 for a Tour Dark Ascension. Comes back from two losses here. Yeah. To make day two. Great job. Looks like Conley Woods gave us a thumbs up. He saw, also made day two. I saw two. a grin and a thumbs up from Conley. Wow. Is that a... Village Ironsmith. Village, Village Ironsmith Wow, Brian Kibler just... And it's all lands. Wow. Kibler really ground that game out. Yeah, wow. great job. That was Great impressive. job finding the win. It's almost like this guy knows how to play Magic or something. Yeah. He should try playing on the Pro Tour. Yeah. See what happens. He was in such a tight spot there. Yeah. Now... He had to a sequence fair, that pretty perfectly. They did, but you know, this is one of the things that the high-level players do very well, which is that he played as if Sperling had nothing else in the gas tank. And as it turns out, Sperling drew a lot of lands and didn't. But that's how Kibler had to approach it. That's what one of the things John was talking about. Did he? He said, like, sometimes I'll just play. I'll like, okay, here's the game situation. I have to play like he hasn't had it. Yep. Or I have to play like the next two cards in my library are this. Because yes. yeah. that's my win. Yes. Right? That is the situation. Right, that's the situation. This is what I need to happen. I need to him to not have something. Mm -hmm. I need, I need my silent departure to be within the top two cards of my deck. Yep. So I'm going to play 
as if he has nothing, or I'm going to play as if the two cards on top right. are this. Yeah. You know, so it's one thing to say, oh, you know, Spurling got nothing, right? It's like, yeah. but th- there's there's still a way for him to play that game and not win. Absolutely, there was a lot of ways to play that game and not win. It was very impressive. You can even take so that one one level further where. Your, your outs aren't what's on top of your deck, but that your opponent makes a mistake. You're like, sure. look, the only way I win this match is if he doesn't block your right tap. I've sure. had matches like that. Sure, of course. Not very often. Yeah. But you get that 2 or 3% edge. Uh, Wong and Owen are 1-1 one, one going to game 3. Oh, geez. Objective journalist. Yes. Objective journalist. Yes, I am not rooting for Brian Wong. I never at root. All. Yeah, I never you root for my you, friends. You never root for your friends. <laughs> Yeah, you're straightforward about it. <laughs> All right, I see. I like almost everybody. So I, I think root Kibler, for everyone. Look at Kim. Oh, he's just. That, that was already in his deck, though. So yeah, he's doing the he's doing I, the two step. I think he might be doing the two step because what I did is I saw him thumb through and grab his dice catcher's rig and put it in this other pile. Now the rig was already in his main and it would right. obviously stay in this matchup. But I wonder. He if wants he wants Sperling to think that uh, something's up. Oh, so he might, he might just be doing a little dance with his Just doing a little dance. He's like, what do you, what do you think I have? <laughs> uh, LSV, 8-1 I mean, on day one. He liked his deck. Strong, strong, his deck. strongly into day two. Well-rested with his sleeping special. Yes. <laughs> uh, Godanis Vidugaris loses, but still safely in at 7-2. Okay. Gets their draft. Yeah. Ty but... asked Conley about, by the way, whether or not he's cheap. Oh, because he didn't pay for the sleep. Pay. Yeah, I asked him. Of course he's cheap. He said, no, he's not cheap. He's like, I am not cheap. I bought Cedric Phillips a birthday dinner yesterday. Okay. He's like, I'm not cheap. I just was driving here from Cedric's with people, and they had to be here for round one. Okay. He's like, I couldn't sleep in. I was we'll staying in Seattle. Yeah. Sure. Somebody asked me last night what the upper, upper limit I would pay for the sleep in special, yeah. and I said $180. Those three hours of sleep to me... Sixty dollars an hour. You're Easily. <laughs> Are you kidding me? So sleep is very important. So more, 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 it. more updates from the win and ends. Uh-huh. Uh, Josh Utter Layton dr- had dropped to X and two last round, mm-hmm. and now had faced a win and end this round, and he won. Okay. So he's safely through. Uh, Matt Costa did not win. So is he out for day two? He's out for day oh, two. I'm disappointed. Yeah, really yeah, he's out. Him. He's out for day two. Sad. So of those 13 like pros, yeah, he's the sort of, um, yeah. Sounds like a lot of them are getting in, though. Well, I mean, like, we saw we saw them go 12 of 13 in the last mm-hmm. round. Yeah. All right. Game three, this is for day two here. Both of these guys flew in from out of state. Neither of them wants to not draft tomorrow. Kibler's looking at here. So turn two spectral right in. Yep. Yeah. And Kibler oh, draws no. his first card and it's going to mulligan. Yeah, this happened to Sperling last game. Yeah, but I mean, Sperling went to five in game one. Yeah. Went to, and, and, I mean, Uh-oh. and demolished. And just yeah, ran him over. When you're the aggressor, that Nibbles of the Urn is quite a nice card. When you're not, it's very bad. It's one of those swingy cards. You really have to make sure you have the right deck for it. Sperling. He has the right deck for it. Let's see if Kibler can keep this six. Six. He lands. Says, yep. Keep it. All right. Off to the races. As predicted. It's a good start. And Kibler has no turn two play yet. There's anything that could get in the way here anymore. And Sperling just passes turn three back, which is, we saw a lot of. I, I think he's got a midnight haunting. Ah, uh, okay. 
the there's chosen. the chosen, uh, and there's and the haunting. You're right, there's the haunting on Insta. So he's cracking for four unblockable this next turn. This is going to get serious. <laughs> this looks like uh, the type of game that Sperling wants to be playing here. Yeah. Had a bit of a is there a captain start. in his future? There's a burden of guild that doesn't isn't really relevant at the moment. Captain, you know this. You know the special riders at night. Uh, excuse me, the spirit. I do know. Yeah. What the heck? Attention, for, players. Um, the the All right. Players the and Markov Patrician comes down. That can help stem the bleeding a bit. Sure. It can't block unless Sperling lets it block. That, it might just get burdened. I don't know. I, I think it almost certainly is. I think it's going to be the same sequence we saw. If he does, though, does he swing with the uh, sentry? Well, he, he, he will if... I mean, because he just trades it for the... Like he has to tap both creatures if he wants to flip. Yeah, so before, so he, if he does it pre-combat... Transform, sorry. Yes. Sorry, Aaron. If he wants to transform his double-faced card? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Like you do on Mitko? <laughs> yes, on Mitko. <laughs> yeah. That's a tough habit to break there. All right, so he actually decided just to do it on the Chosen here, and he's going to activate his burden, and he just, no, yep. and Kibler just lets it happen. And he's like, I will gladly yeah. eat your Thraben Sentry for, and gain three life. And gain three, which, of course, the Spurling's not going to let happen. Only plays the land, and it looks like the Iron Man. Right, right, yeah. Okay. Certainly not me. Kibler's saying something Certainly. very emphatically, but we can't hear. It's really stepped out, for what it's worth. It looked like Kibler wanted to land there. Kibler was like, come on. I think he was saying something along the lines I think of, he was saying, man, I run so bad. Yeah. Yeah, Kibler <laughs> runs real bad at life. <laughs> Patrician's going to keep holding back the Thraven Sentry, but Sperling can attack with all of his evasive creatures here. He's got Kibler on a three-turn clock currently. He's at six. At some point, he can gain three life attacking with his Patrician. He can. He can just cash that in. All right, so that got tapped on his upkeep. Looks like. Fiddler has an aired wall ripper. Not doing what he wants. The kind of card that, you know, I'd be thinking about at this point is like a blasphemous act. Huh. You know, if I'm in Spurling seat. Yeah, that's funny. It's like the go-to card, you know, you're playing. It's like, no, don't play another guy. What if he has mountain blasphemous act? Right. Because right now blasphemous act would cost like three mana or two mana. So like what is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. So it casts rip. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Same thing as lightning bolt, but thirteen to everything. Oh, by the way, you, you and I were talking about saving grasp the other night. Yeah. Let me tell you something about playing saving grasp with your blasphemous act. Oh. You're like, okay. hey, red, saving grasp. Boo boo. Kind of like it. All right. So he's going to bring Kibler to two here, and he's going to force the Markov Patrician to attack him. Um, if he does so. He'll go to five, which means that the evasive guys won't kill them by himself. But it'll get kind of ugly from here. Sperling's being patient. Kibler does attack with his Patrician. He has to gain the life this turn. Yep. The saving grass would be nice here for Sperling. He could block and then bounce his guy. And, uh, Put the iron right in the way. Yeah, so in this case, he just blocks. But Kibler wouldn't get any life in that other case. Oh, oh Morkrit Banshee. Morkrit Banshee is probably just going to take out the... Well, the problem is he has to take out the knight. Yeah. Why? Because he's, I mean, he's just going go to go to... He's just going to go to one. Yeah. Like, he can... He... But is he dead at that point? No. Because he, he's, he can just... He, he can block that. And take one damage. He can block that. Go okay. three, go to two. Yep. All right. So he's got at least another draw step out of the deal here. Another Thraben Sentry. Oh, jeez. 
take a trampoline. Right, so he flip. trades, takes one, and he goes, gets to flip another goes one. Straight, he's like, I'll just put that one in there. Yeah, I'll leave this flip one right here. Save the time. He, he really needs a... Uh, he really needs a death's caress right here, right? Uh, even then, the two tokens just kill him. Well, he, he'd gain he'd gain four life. Oh, right, to take out the sentry. Yeah, but, but no, right. it's and not it's there. Wow, the Matt Sparling goes through to day two. Good job to him. Again, starting game one on five cards. And just running. Yeah, just just. Savage. 